I'm pretty excited to talk today. I'm, I'm a physio, I'll go over that shortly. Um, but for once, I don't have to talk about musculoskeletal injuries. Um, it's really cool. What makes a high performance driver? I don't know whether anybody knows this fellow. He's probably the most successful um, motorsport driver in history. His name's Sebastian Loeb. Um, I'm going to talk about rallying today. Rally drivers are better than Formula One drivers. <laughs> if anyone saw the Formula One last week, Kimi Raikkonen, who's just come back to Formula One, actually has been in rallying for the last few years, and he said that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not, it's not sort of uh, baseless. Um, Sebastian Loeb has won eight world championships, which is phenomenal. It's just amazing. He's competed in, I think, 153 world rally um, events over the past 10 years. And out of the 153, this bloke's been on the podium, so he's finished in the top three 105 times, which is just insane. He's won, I think, 65 of the 105 events. So, you know, if we want to look and model on what makes up a high-performance driver, this is, this is a guy to look at. He started life off as an elite gymnast. Um, whether that factors in much towards the attributes of a high-performance driver, um, we could debate that all day. I think it probably does. Um, he's disciplined. Um, he has a personality type that is always striving for improvement, and they're two things that um, any form of motorsport needs, but particularly rallying. So I'm going to talk today about the sort of attributes that build this bloke into what he is. What I was going to show you is um, some in-car footage of, of a guy driving a, an old car, like a 1980 model um, Ford Escort, and he's very talented, this bloke. And you'll see the interaction between um, co-driver and driver, the concentration, the, the driver's obviously concentrating on what he's doing, but also the information that he's receiving from his co-driver. The co-driver is talking absolutely flat out at giving him the notes of, of what's coming up and this guy's um, cognitively receiving it, um, processing it, and he's doing about 10 other things at once. It's quite, quite fascinating. Five, four, Six, three, minus crest in the five left, minus eight, open 60. 
little bit about me. Um, I'm a musculoskeletal physio. Um, when I was preparing the talk the other day, my wife was sort of asking, what are you doing? I hadn't told her I'm involved in this. And um, so when I told her that I was talking about high performance driving, she said, why would you, why would you, why would they want to know about that? And as I sort of prepared the talk, I kind of realised that there's a lot of things that these guys have that are obviously very, very high level skills that drivers of all age groups need um, every day. So just as we go through the talk, um, try and sort of reflect back to the sorts of people that you guys see each day and, and you'll see that these skills need to be present in, in everybody. My foray into motorsport started a lot of years ago. Um, I'm not a motorhead, I'm not a bogan. Um, <laughs> It's the most addictive drug I've ever... Oh, not that I take drugs, but... <laughs> it's the most addictive sport activity I've ever been involved in. In 2008, we won um, a Victorian championship, um, me as a co-driver, uh, and in 2010, I won a Victorian club championship as a driver. I'm not professing to say I'm a, a guru driver, but over the years, I've really... I think I've sat down and worked out what attributes um, good drivers have and what it takes to, to improve your performance. So if we go back to Sebastian, um, there's three key things, three simple, I like schemas, um, there's three key things that make up um, a driver um, and obviously how good they are det is determined by you know to what extent each of these three things are advanced. So if we look at um, technical skill first, um, Obviously, the video before showed this unbelievable amount of technical skill. There's five key things, uh, and I think, again, we all need that when we're driving on the road. As a rally driver, vision, um, and I'm not just talking about, you know, the, the level of eyesight, you know, and eye testing. Vision, vision for a rally driver is being able to sort of take in the entire surrounds in front of you in a split second and work out um, what you've got to do for that next you know, 50 or 100 metres. So vision's a skill that, um, that needs to be pretty well developed in a, in a rally driver. Feel, um, I've sat with lots of people that can drive very quickly. They've got some of these other skills, but they don't have feel. Um, they, they usually end up breaking their, their vehicles um, or, you know, breaking their vehicle and then hitting something. So feel is, feel is an intuitive thing. Um, I actually think some people don't have the ability to develop it very much. Someone like Sebastian Loeb has incredible feel. He, um, he knows as soon as something's wrong with his car and he adjusts his driving, okay? The video before showed this old car which has no um, modern technology, um, traction control, all of the sort of things that are in the modern rally cars this bloke didn't have. So his feel is incredible. Um, Richard talked before about speed. Um, you know, in, respect to intersections and approaching intersections where accidents happen. Uh, race drivers, rally drivers have unbelievable speed judgment um, based on what surface they're on. They know when to break. It's a bit different to a racetrack. Uh, after 300 laps of a racetrack, you get to know the exact point that you should be touching that brake pedal. In a rally car, you don't. You know, you've got to go by feel and, and, and using your vision. So um, speed judgment's um, very important. The reactions, uh, obviously, vision, feel and speed uh, are probably the attributes that help to um, make you react. Okay, So if you don't have those first three things, the speed judgment, the feel and the vision, uh, your reactions are probably not going to be good. Uh, and then obviously coordination. In a rally car, um, a driver will be simultaneously using the three pedals, um, handbrake, uh, wipers, um, and probably five or six other buttons um, at once while they're listening to some bozo like me, um, you know, talking at the sort of rate that I'm talking now. So it's, there's a lot of stuff going on. And technical skills something that takes time to develop. I th I'm sure we all know skills, um, you know, and becoming an expert in something takes hours and hours and hours. Um, Sebastian Loeb's 153 rallies, you know, there's 400 kilometres in a rally. Um, he drives the stages multiple times. So every single week, this bloke's getting um, time in the car and also, you know, some of these skills, um, even when he's just driving the course and looking at things. Physical fitness. Um, 
yeah, I'm a musculoskeletal physio. I treat sports people predominantly. Um, and obviously, in traditional sport, physical fitness is key. Um, it's certainly important, very important in, in motorsport, and at the elite level, it's, it's important. Um, perhaps not as important as in some other sports, but if we look at, fi at fitness with respect to driving, what are the sorts of things that um, drivers do? Predominantly gym. Um, and aerobic activity. So most race drivers, rally drivers, spend probably two hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so you know, I think I've got at the bottom 10 to 15 hours a week uh, working on their fitness. Lots of them are involved in triathlon, um, which is quite a disciplined sport as well. Uh, triathlon you know, involves fluid intake, um, carbohydrate management, heart rate control, and a lot of these things come back to performance driving as well. They also love bike riding. Um, mountain biking is probably a classic thing that um, drivers do and it's probably helping to keep their visual sort of field and their visual skills up to, up to standard. Um, obviously improving strength and endurance is one of the key things in a car. Dehydration is something that we know very well in you know, cycling and running and um, we probably don't think that much about it in the context of, of driving. Um, maybe someone later will be talking about that. In motorsport, it's critical. Um, we know physiologically that a 1.5% to 2% reduction um, in body weight due to sweat loss um, will significantly alter both physical and, and mental function, mental performance. Um, in rally driving and in, in V8 supercars, temperatures get commonly in up to 50 degrees uh, inside a car. Um, and you've also got a big dirty helmet, um, a balaclava, a big suit, driving suit, gloves, underwear. Um, so they're all compulsory things. Wouldn't be wearing them. <laughs> Love my long johns. Um, so in, even in short events, it's quite common that if you don't drink, you lose 3%. So hydration is critical. Um, and, and a lot of accidents do occur um, due to a loss of concentration, concentration associated with that. Carbohydrate intake um, associated with fitness is critical. Um, again, athletes, runners and, and triathletes know very, very well how much uh, intake people need to take. Um, Blood glucose levels obviously um, drops as you keep driving. So a lot of these guys will be consuming um, drinks through fluid systems. Um, they've got carbohydrates involved. Probably the most important thing is, is mental fitness. I like the word mental fitness because it's, it sort of implies that it's, it's a trait or a skill that can be developed um, or regressed if you're not, if you're not working on it. And obviously central to, to mental fitness is concentration. Um, not trying to blow my own trumpet. Rally drivers and, and performance drivers have the most amazing concentration. Um, and, and looking at concentration as a, as a single entity is probably um, not that fruitful. Uh, concentration involves lots of different things. So this schema shows um, you know, a, a width and a depth to concentration and you need all of them um, and I'll talk about it in a sec but but concentrating on one thing and one thing only in a rally car will have you into the side of a tree pretty quickly so there's a lot of things you need to be adjusting for. So if we look at the um, at the dimensions um, the internal and the external you get these sort of and this is quite sports psychological I don't know whether there's any psychologists here um, Sports psychology is, is very, very commonly used in, in driving. Um, psychology is critical. How we're thinking and what's going on is really critical. Um, if you break these things up into quadrants, you've got these sort of um, traits, I guess, and a driver needs to be able to swap between uh, analysing, rehearsing, focusing and scanning all the time, continually. Uh, so an example of... Um, of Analyzing would be looking at sort of the big picture, um, how you're performing through a stage, how you're comparing to um, you know, the driver in front of you, looking at the whole big picture um, and thinking about it. In terms of rehearsing, we do this a lot. 
it, you know, there's, there's a lot of thinking, when, especially when you bugger something up. You, you know, it jogs your memory back into thinking, OK, I've got to get my car in a better position. I've got to hit my brakes at this certain point. So that's the rehearsal aspect. Down the bottom, these are the two sort of external um, attributes that people need to, to show. When someone's driving, I talked before about scanning a road. Um, that's critical. You know, you've got to know what's coming up 200 metres up the road and you know, what that crest looks like it's doing, if the road's going to go left or right. That's scanning. Um, and then focusing is probably looking at the immediate thing in front of you, um, you know, the big rock that's sitting uh, right on the driving line that you're about to hit. Um, so all of those four things are used all the time. And, uh, and if you just use one, you're going to get yourself into trouble. So if we look at concentration and what affects it, um, three emotional traits <laughs> very, very commonly affect um, concentration. I had a massive accident in 2008 and it was pretty much caused because I was angry um, and it was totally my fault. I, I had a problem with the car. I had a problem with the car in front of me. It was dusty. Um, it was night time. Um, I couldn't really see what was going on and I was trying to make up time from the previous stage and, uh, and there was a crest coming up and I looked at the road and thought, yep, the tree line cuts away to the right. So I threw the, or set the car up over this crest probably at 120k an hour and the road went left. So if I hadn't have been angry, if I had have controlled um, you know, my emotions, honestly I don't think it would have happened. So with respect to accidents and poor outcomes with motorsport, emotions are, are very commonly involved and we need to be able to control them. Um, and down the bottom I've just got the physiology influences which we talked about before. Um, so hydration, blood glucose levels uh, and obviously um, muscle fatigue. Um, you know, we change gears 10 times a kilometre um, and there's a lot of work on the arms and the legs uh, and even just keeping yourself stable. So muscle fatigue is a common thing. And that would be the other video <laughs> highlighting um, Sebastian last year. Actually, it's quite a fascinating video. Just to finish off, as I said, this guy is the best driver in the world. Um, he crashed his car in Australia last year and it showed some footage of it happening in real time. It was very quick. And um, when the reporters got to him and said, so what happened? He said, well, I got distracted on the dash by a split time. These guys have times coming up on their, on their dashboard all the time. And he looked at the split time momentarily and got the car, I don't know, three inches across to the left, hit a bank and rolled over six times. So it was just a, quite a graphic example of how concentration um, in our sport plays out. Sur gauche à fond long, sur double attention. Droite 130 moins frein pour 30 mètres. Droite 40, 90 plus. De suite de merde. C'est bon Ouais. Ça, je dis qu'on est sorti. Hein. Ouais, vas-y. Attends. Attends, attends. Okay, Seb, what happened, mate? Uh, what happened is uh, that we went on the road, like you can see. Uh, I just uh, entered a bit too fast in a right hand here, and uh, because uh, I've done a mistake, um, I saw a split time on the, on the dash. I was disconcentrated, didn't break uh, enough for the corner, and then I was a bit too fast. Uh, in conclusion, I think this is probably the biggest thing that you know we should all take, um, that these three factors, uh, certainly in, in motorsport, are critical. Um, but I think for anyone driving on the roads, that's, they're the three attributes that I'll be looking at. Thank you.